Thanks for watching Lessons in Minutes with J. Lee. Like, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Hey guys, today there is one more thing that I want to show you as it relates to purchases journal, and that is how to prepare the source document that purchases invoice. So at the end of this lesson, you should be able to prepare a source document for credit purchase. And I'm going to take you to a part of a question, an excerpt of a question that was taken from the Franco Business Accounting, the 10th edition. And this part of the question is from exercise 15.1. And it reads, Ajak has the following purchases for the month of May 2018. Let's use the X as one. So 2018. May 1st, from D. Pope, it's saying that Ajak purchased goods from D. Pope for DVDs at $60 each, three mini I5 units at $240 each, less 25% trade discount. So what we're saying is that Ajak bought two different items from Depot on May 1st on credit, but this individual got 25% trade discount. Maybe as a loyal customer, he got that, or probably because he had purchased several items that got a trade discount, but bear in mind that trade discount is not recorded in the accounting books. It is used to determine the value of what the person should pay for the set of items that were purchased. Okay, now um, for the, as it relates to the invoice, all this information that we have right here is very important. So I have pre-prepared the invoice for you. So we're going to look at the details in the invoice. So I'll be annotating. So here we have the invoice that was prepared. So you're seeing invoice. Any source document that you prepare, the title must be there. What type of source document are you preparing? We are preparing an invoice. But you may be wondering, why is it that the purchases is not added to that? There is no need to do that because guess what? The depot right here indicates the supplier's information. So what the suppliers usually do is have their, some of them usually have their personalized invoice. So you would see the logo of the organization. You'll see the address of the organization where it is located, email address, all the social media information if that is there and the telephone number. But from this question that wasn't given, and I didn't bother to go down into that to create all of that fancy details, but bear in mind that that's a part of it. So it's just like having like a letter head then. Now, so once you have the information for the supplier, it means that then you're able to determine whether or not it is a purchase invoice or it is a sales invoice. I soon point out that information to, um, to you people. Now we have two. The two right here is the customer's information. In this case, we're seeing that a jack is the business. So look at it as a jack is our business, your business, but you have purchased goods from, you have purchased goods from D Pope. The depot is the supplier. Ajak is the customer. So in this case, because we are the customer, our business is the customer, it means that we are preparing a purchases invoice. So once your business is, is, is the customer, then it is a purchases invoice. If your business is the supplier, then it is a sales invoice, all right? Now, our date is very important and our date is located right here. 
very important because you want to know when the transaction took place. The terms, some businesses would have their terms and their terms, for example, could be 5% three days, meaning that if you pay within three days, the amount that is owing within three days, you'll get a 3% cash discount. So you would be paying less than the amount that is due. They could have otherwise net, meaning that once you pass the three days, you would not get any discount. You would have to pay the total amount that is due. Now, the columns are quantity description, unit price, total. From the transaction, we are seeing that the business purchased four DVDs, so four DVDs listed on the description, DVDs on the description, the unit price is $60. You multiply by that 60 by the four to get the total price of 240. And we had pulled the information for the three mini i5 units at 240 each. Once you say each, that is a unit price. If it did state three mini i5 units at 240, then that would be the total price. And to get the each, you would have to divide that 240 by the three. So we have all the information as it relates to the items that were purchased. Those are recorded in the invoice. So what you would do after you have entered those two items that were purchased, these two items, once you record those, then the next thing for you is to do your total. What is the total amount based on that purchase? And that is 960. But guess what? Ajak got 25% trade discount. So this 960 would be less by 25%. How did we get that to calculate 25%? It is 960 multiplied by 25%, and that gives us a value of $240. So you notice that the value that Ajax should pay is not 960 anymore because Ajax got a 25% trade discount from Depop. So what Ajax is now owing to Depop, the supplier right there, what our business basically is owing to Depop is the amount that is due of 720. And that is it for the invoice some businesses stamp use their company stamp and they would stamp it some people just sign their signature on it etc but it depends on your business policy now what we're going to look at now is what we would put in the purchases journal so if you are asked to prepare the purchases journal how would this entry be made in it the name of the business is ajac we're preparing the purchases journal. And I'm gonna give this a page number for folio reference purpose. So say this is page 20 and the date is 2018. That would be May 1st. Our details is the name of the supplier. And remember the name of the supplier is D Pope. So that's D the invoice number i didn't point out that but the invoice number is very important any source document you prepare there must be a number that is there and they're usually pre-numbered for control purpose internal control purposes so the invoice number is 5281 coming from a source document there the folio we can complete the folio so i'm going to make up a folio num a page number for a depot but of course because it is a supplier account it is located in the purchases ledger and we're going to see that it's located on page five the amount no which is very important you would look at your purchases invoice and you pick up the total amount that is due and that is that 720 that is what we're going to record as our amount so that is 720 and that is all that you would need to do when you are preparing the purchases 
journal from the invoice. So there are cases where you could be given an invoice. Some transactions prepare the invoice. From the invoice, you're asked to prepare the purchases journal. If there are any tra other transactions for or any other invoices relating to this particular period, they would have been transferred, the information would be transferred to the purchases journal. So you make a note of all those purchases, credit purchases in your purchases journal. Then you would total and transfer the total credit purchases to your purchases account in your general ledger. So basically, people, that is the end of the lesson on purchases journal. And remember, for this session, we had focused on preparing the source document, which is purchases invoice. Like, share, and don't forget to subscribe.